This is Pioneer. Uh, I run the Harmony Villains Twitter, and I'm also a core team member over at MTOPSWAP. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to visually get to know everyone and to start this YouTube channel to kind of uh, discuss some of the issues and benefits and just the entire ecosystem on the Harmony blockchain. Um, there's a lot to say and there's many spaces that we can kind of address these things, but I just wanted to try this out and see if it uh, helps in any way and if it's something that starts discourse appropriately. Um, so yeah, I want to talk kind of about the grant guidelines as they currently stand, uh, what I think maybe we can do a little bit better uh, regarding those, and uh, maybe in the comments below we can figure out you know, a good topic for the future or a good way to progress this conversation. But yeah, uh, the current grant vision is basically to encourage builders to come to the Harmony blockchain um, to build their projects and to hopefully bring new users and new money to the chain. Um, you know, Harmony wants to promote uh, DeFi projects, game projects, NFTs, uh, tooling, and metaverse projects uh, to their chain. Um, and one thing of note that I think is a common misconception that is outlined in the current guidelines is that the grant is not uh, here to fully fund a startup company. It's here to get your feet off the ground and for you to kind of build your community here alongside your development on Harmony. Um, some of the things that they require for the grant guidelines is a, you know, a description of your project. What are you hoping to bring to the table? Maybe some user interface examples. Um, your launch plan, how you intend to uh, you know, basically run through your roadmap for the first six months of exclusivity that's required on Harmony. And also, you know, hopefully how you plan to be self-sustainable as a company. Um, that's a huge thing that we don't see enough of. Um, and I believe that, you know, if you're asking for $50,000 plus uh, for the typical uh, grant funding for a project, that you can afford the time and maybe even the money to get, uh, you know, a spreadsheet laid out showing how you plan on making revenues, what the timeline looks like, and what the metrics are going to be required to actually achieve those revenues. And then also, you know, if you aren't meeting those uh revenue streams on time, what else you can possibly do to bolster your sales. Um, that's kind of a, a really huge thing that we don't see enough of, but um, it is in the guidelines that those are kind of the expectations. Uh, also, you know, you have to link your website, your DAP, your socials, being, you know, your Twitter, your Discord, your Telegram, your Reddit, uh, whatever socials you might have, along with your Gitbook, which should be open source, and a pitch deck, deck if you have it. Um, another thing is your team. You know, who are they? What are their experience levels? If they're doxxed, uh, link their LinkedIn. Um, and then what percentage time commitments that they're able to dedicate to this project. Um, uh, a huge kind of cornerstone of the new grant guidelines is you, know, you need a POC um, that looks hopefully something similar to your minimum viable product uh, just to see you know, exactly you know what we're talking about in a, in a visual regard and to see it you know on mainnet or testnet um, and then things that are still quite important but that are more like asks or um, you know, kind of advice that you can do alongside uh, the grant uh, is to market the hell out of your product you know you need to be out there uh, in other project spaces maybe even on other chains uh, doing AMAs and Twitter spaces to introduce your product uh, to new users and to uh, get those new users to come into your space and talk about their project. Uh, that's extremely important. That's something that I know doesn't happen enough because I try to spend a lot of time in different Discord servers and it's something that every single uh, person that's asking for a grant would benefit from. Um, another thing is to gauge the community support by starting a quadratic snapshot um, that lasts a duration of two weeks or longer. Uh, I think it's capped at four weeks and the choices are yes, no, and abstain and that's just to see kind of where the community uh, lies in terms of showing support for your project. Um, and then another thing is uh, weekly updates on the forum. 
you know this is web 3 we have a constant demand for communicating and one thing you can do is give the users and the potential investors a weekly update on the forum just to know that you're still working on your project kind of where you're at uh, and that you're still kind of hoping to hear back from maybe the grant committee or whatever but just a weekly update is super helpful um, to kind of make sure that all the users know that you're still committed to the to the grant um, talked about open sourcing and then yeah six month exclusivity on harmony and a five of nine multi-sig so those are the guidelines and things you can do beyond the guidelines uh, to kind of uh, prepare for the success and hopeful approval and funding of your grant. Um, but I want to talk actually more about some things I think we can do better. Uh, and like, this is just my opinion. I'm, I'm a community member, like most of the people that are probably watching this video. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, in the comments below what you think about these ideas. We can also create a space in the forum uh, to talk about them. But uh, one thing is that we're basically investing in projects and probably the majority of them are, are going to fail. You know, that's a huge part of seed funding and investing is to understand that some of them might fail, but in terms of returns, you know, a small fraction of them can make up for that and then some. You know, the, the whole point here is to bring new users into the space and uh, to have new money flowing through the space. Uh, beyond that, uh, hopefully we have really great project leaders and really fun games, uh, really uh, unique NFT experiences and maybe a metaverse that's actually you know usable in some regard. But the, the goals are users and money, right? Um, so some things that I think we can do better would be uh, right now the grant process is not very standardized in terms of when will I hear back if I'm filing for a grant? When will I hear back? It's, it's completely random, right? I would say to standardize that and say you will not hear back until 30 days have elapsed and that's just to screen out bad actors you know everybody that goes on the grant forum kind of follows the same procedure but I've seen so many people just throw up a grant just to see what happens right so if you know it's going to take 30 days just to hear back from anyone beyond saying hey we we've uh, we've received your grant request we will get back to you once the 30 days have elapsed Beyond that, you know, it gives the community time to do the snapshot. It gives the team time to market and maybe solidify uh, their members. You know, um, it gives you time to bolster your metrics for the grant proposal. So I think 30 days is a really good number because, like I said, it'll weed out people that that aren't patient enough to wait, and it'll also give you know the core team or whoever's handling this, which I'll get to later, uh, some time to actually sift through all the grants, uh, get to know the teams and whatnot. Um, a huge thing is, you know, I said earlier, proof that the project can be sustainable, self-sustainable, you know, and that would be where like a spreadsheet or some sort of tokenomics are emphasized. Um, and, you know, some, some of the projects, this is not going to actually include them, but most of the, the GameFi projects or DeFi projects or DEXs or anything, you know, you have to prove how are you going to get the money to to feed yourselves and to pay your dev after the, the initial $50,000 has been received and spent. Um, I think that you, we should not be funding projects that only have one developer or core team. I think that you, know, you need maybe a minimum of three and that they should be doxxed um, and interviewed. Uh, I would also suggest maybe that the committee that is uh, reviewing these grants actually take a seat on the multi-signature uh, treasury of each of the each of the projects that are actually uh, granted and funded just to make sure that we have eyes on that multi-sig that we're kind of more active in the project and that we're a little bit more insulated from bad actors uh, weekly follow-ups via AMA I, I love the idea of having a team of people that are funded well enough to spend their time engaging with these projects that are funded and granted um, and I think that having weekly AMAs it, it could just be 15 minutes where you just pop in check where they're at and make sure they're still on track because uh, a huge thing that uh, I think we're missing out on is the follow-up you know the follow-up and the feedback mechanism here we fund these projects and we don't really keep track of you know where they're at financially 
uh, how their user base is doing. Um, and I think that if we followed up with them very closely, we would have a better idea of what they're accomplishing with what monies. Um, and you know, we could potentially advise on that as well, you know, and vice versa. If we see that we funded ten or twenty thousand dollars, and the team has just spent it on you know, the team's salary or something, that's obviously not sustainable. And I think we should just stop funding them, right? Um, there's going to be a few people that we choose to fund, and then maybe they lose steam, and we should stop funding them, right? Um, and vice versa. If there's uh, a project that has gotten its initial fifty thousand dollars and it's really on the cusp of making a, a you know a huge impact on the chain maybe we should you know take them back in and talk about injecting more capital or talk about taking in some of their ownership in the form of uh, coins or something and you know reinjecting them with capital to make sure that they succeed you know instead of just oh you got your fifty thousand or you got thirty thousand of the fifty thousand and you're just not going to make it to the rest of the milestones good luck and then they pull the liquidity and leave you know so i think there's a lot of potential for following up and keeping in touch with these uh projects and really getting you know getting involved in terms of how are they spending the money and just helping them to get to that level of sustainability that I think we desperately need. There's not enough projects that are actually able to feed themselves right now. Um, another uh, thought of mine is that milestones shouldn't be completed in tandem with one another and shouldn't be paid uh, as such either. They should be paid one milestone and then let like two weeks or 15 days uh, pass before funding another one. You know, I, I don't think that we should be putting out tens of thousands of dollars in one chunk because it gives opportunity for them to walk away with more money and it uh, takes away from our ability to be there and following up with the projects as they're spending the money to make sure because we we also might be able to help with uh, negotiating which contractors they're using we've got a dev DAO you know we could potentially save them some of this money that we're funding so that they can go further for their project um, if any part of the core team of a project that has been funded has is changed i think that we should pause the funding and interview the the new team member or pause the funding and have them completely reapply i've seen a few projects that take in new leadership and then basically slow rug and pull the liquidity uh xenon phi was one of them that's pretty much what happened and there might be a longer story behind that but we can insulate ourselves by making these requirements right um I would say another thing, I guess kind of a closing statement, but at a high level is there's a grant committee. Um, currently it looks like it's contributors and fellows of the core team under the core team's guidance. I think what if we, we've got the community snapshot, which kind of represents where the community's uh, going with their yes or no or abstain. What if we took the core DAOs, we've got the validator DAO, the dev DAO, in the community DAO, three governors from each, and made a new committee that oversees the grants. Um, it's still an active role. It gives uh, some further validation to the salaries that they receive being governors in the DAOs, which may or may not continue, but this would give us, you know, developers with skill sets that uh, would help us to identify discrepancies and uh, also you know great things about projects at a technical level the community DAO, which obviously should represent the community and should be quite diverse uh, and then the validator DAO, again sort of technical but these are the people that have the most stake backing them they're basically elected officials as well um, in harmony so that would give us a nice well-rounded uh, group of people i think to represent a decentralized uh, opinion on these grants Again, you know, that's in tandem with the community snapshot. And also, I would say take a core team member, whether it be like Lee or Daniel, Daniel Pagan, uh, the communications lead uh, from the core team, uh, working in tandem, you know, to where we've got a lot of community representation, we've got technical leaders, uh, and then we've got the core team, you know, being able to employ, you know, their values, make sure their standards are met. And also, I understand sometimes they shift uh, what their very you know what they're looking for for the chain right now it might be nfts it might be metaverse you know who knows but that's always changing it might be gamefi so they're going to want to say that you know within the committee 
um, I, I like the idea of having a kind of trifecta of well-rounded people that uh, we all know who it is um, and it's decentralized. These are all elected officials. Um, that's just my opinion, but right now I feel like there's a lot of a lot of uh, conversation about how it's quite centralized, um, and I think that's you know one possible way that we can utilize the core DAOs further, uh, and also you know have representative uh, elected officials uh, you know giving voice to the community at large. Um, so yeah, again, this is Pioneer with MTOP Swap and Harmony Villains account and just wanted to take the time to kind of give you my two cents on where the grant guidelines sit now and what I think we can improve on. And this is in no way uh, the end of a conversation. You know, this is the beginning of it. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Um, this is the start of a journey. I'll still be way active on the forums. I'll still maintain some Medium articles, but I just wanted to try this out and see uh, if it's, you know, something that you're interested in.